Hi! Using deep learning to compose heavy metal music. Um, today I'm very happy because I recently uploaded a video where I showed for the first time this great tool that I'm using for well, my own music composition based on deep learning and I got so much positive feedback so thank you a lot um, for all the, um, the great feedback that I got. Also, thanks a lot for all the great questions that I got. So people got really, really excited about, well, what, what's happening here. Um, I'm happy to answer a few of those questions. So the first question was about inference time. Like, how fast is my neural network? Um, let me just start by composing a guitar. So there's your guitar. Just look at it and see, maybe I won't like it. Aha, uh -huh. let's, let's create another one. There you go, let another one. Okay, this looks promising, so I'm going to listen to that. Well, and while I'm here, let's add some drums. Aha, uh -huh, some drums. And well, why not? Let's add a bass. And well, while we listen to that one as well. So you see me nodding my head again, which is um, the, the face before going into head banging, because, well, this is something that is harmonically sound and it goes in the right direction. And you see me, well, every time when I click here, um, the deep neural network generates those note events that you see here. And as you saw, let me just create um, drums again. This is rather quick. And well, you might ask, what is my, my secret behind that? There's actually no secret. This is GPT-2 running on my Mac. There's no, no GPU acceleration, no nothing. It just plainly runs on my Apple M1, um, does a fair job, does not really get hot um, doing this, and inference time is almost um, instantaneously. I could um, scale this whole thing. I mean, could, for example, map it to the Onyx format and get a maybe faster inference, do some quantization, even put it in a GPU, but, well, as you can see here, no special hardware is really needed for the composing part. And since I'm the only composer here, it's still fine. It just keep running on the CPU. But still, there are quite a lot of ways to speed things up if necessary, especially you want to like to scale it to a product. So fairly easy. Um, as usual with deep neural networks, it takes quite some power to train, but inference, I mean, GPT-2, no problem at all. That's good. Next question, um, um, it's, a, it's a very, very good question. It's about like how much data do I need or do you need, for example, if you would like to train something similar. If you'd like to get started, usually, well, a couple of hundreds MIDI files or songs would be enough. Um, there's this great example of the Johann Sebastian Bach Chorele. It's Chorals by Johann Sebastian Bach. It's roughly 350, almost 400 songs. Um, they come in quite a lot of encodings and usually you would get started training your neural network on that. Maybe an LSTM, maybe a transformer or, well, a Markov chain would also be enough um, to get some interesting results, so to say. Um, and also training time, if you'd even use a transformer for that, which might be a little bit of an overkill, training time is just nothing. It doesn't run for days. We talk about a couple of minutes, maybe an hour or two. So that's that's fine. You get some interesting results, maybe even some good results. Um, it might be a little bit repetitive because, well, we're just talking about 350, 400 um, songs. So there's not so much, how can I say, variety in that. I seem to remember last year when I started with that project around Easter that there was a time when I trained and did experiments with a data set where I had 1,200 um, rock songs. So. 1200 MIDI files, I did all pre-processing, I trained Transformer on that. And that was the first time when I got the feeling that, yes, this definitely goes in the right direction because it's kind of managed to compose um, rock music. And also I got the feeling that, um, well, I could add more that I did. And then I, I moved to um, heavy metal music. Well, truth be told, the data set that I'm talking about here, 7,000 songs, it's the major part is actually heavy metal and there's a tiny little slice where I also have rock and roll music in it. Um, well, I had so many media files, so this was just a natural step to do. 
And here, well, training was a little bit more, um, took a little bit more time, and I just got excellent results. And what you can, um, what I, I showed, and I'm going to show soon in future videos, is that this neural network also works in a conditioned way. So I can ask neural network to create power metal, to create heavy metal, black metal, death metal, and quite a lot of other genres, like those genres here, it's quite a lot. So this conditional generation also works like a charm. And I think this comes from the amount of data that I trained the neural network on. And also, like, how much does it cost? Like, how much money do you have to put on the side in order to train such a neural network? Well, with those 7,000 media files, I trained GPT-2 on that. And the costs were roughly, for this final neural network, the costs were... I think 400 euros on AWS. So I ran on a virtual machine with four GPUs, trained for four days and well, 400 euros. And well, I <laughs> I can almost feel you like running off to your um, to the people who would like to, to sponsor you. This is the final model that I've trained. I did some experiments before that. So every time um, when you hear someone saying, well, the model trained that amount of time and also cost that much money, Usually people don't tell you about the experiments that they did before. So um, maybe it's in that case, I can't remember, maybe it was double the amount of money for all the experiments that I did. I mean, some things might go wrong with data set preparation and then you have to retrain again, start from scratch, happens all the time. And also in that small amount of money, um, no mention whatsoever, time and material. Well, at the end of the day, I'm also like an advisor. So um, I do projects um, like that and I charge on an hourly basis. So this is also not, not taken into account. So if you would like um, to calculate a business case, it's a little bit more than just the costs on AWS for the final model. But still, well, we're talking about a few weeks of work and then you have something very, very nice up and running. And this is the result now after less than a year when I had some time to improve it and also worked on um, the source code for the user interface and get something which is really crisp on the fingers, really, really works like a charm. So in, an, in a nutshell, well, data, you can start with a very, very small data set. Costs are not that much. We're not talking about a huge language model that costs millions of euros and also inference time with this language model it's almost um, almost nothing. You get results like just a few milliseconds or maybe one or two seconds after clicking, depending on the node density. But still, it's it's nothing that should really really be um, that, that should impress you a lot. So it's it's still handleable. It's still something that uh, that you can do in your time. So thank you very much. It was a pleasure. See you soon.